Hi, and welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hitteman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today we're gonna to be talking again about reports, specifically about the different types of reports that you can actually create using the template editor. Now in the last video, we created a simple text report um, showing two rows, several value fields, separated by spaces. Um, what this does in, on the Tecla side is it creates an XSR file which will actually open up in a notepad or a WordPad type program. Uh, if you run it with the option on dialog, um, what you end up getting here is just a, like a, a Tecla structures window with the, uh, the output that you specified. If you set this for with associated viewer, uh, and I say create from all, it simply finds the, the software that I have XSR files associated with and it opens it up. Uh, in this case, that would be Notepad. Um, so the reason I show you this is because this with associated viewer or on dialog does play into the different types of reports that we're gonna talk about today. Um, so to start off, I'm gonna take this report that we created that goes into uh, a text file. And I'm gonna show you how we can make this into an Excel spreadsheet, specifically a CSV or comma separated value file. Um, so as its name might imply, comma separate, separated values, um, what you do is you put commas in to separate the different fields into columns so that when it opens up in Excel, it looks like a spreadsheet. Um, so we can do that quite simply. In an existing report like this one, we can simply use the text option to add a comma. So if I go ahead and I save or I, I paste these, these commas in in between my fields, and I can keep either re-entering that or I can simply right click and copy and then go ahead and paste where I want these to be. The location isn't critical. This is just meant to be a breakpoint for Excel to open this up and know what to do with it. So that's the first step. We have to put the commas in the report. The next thing I need to do is resave this template with a different extension so that Tecla knows and the, and the computer knows that I'm trying to create a file type and open it up in Excel rather than in Notepad. Uh, so what we can do is go up to the file menu here and I'm simply gonna do a save as. Um, I'm gonna leave it as the same name, but what I'm gonna do different is I'm gonna change the file extension here. Now. RPT is required so that Tecla can see this report in the reports dialog box. But what I'm gonna do is enter a second extension in between the name and the actual end extension, I'm gonna add a middle extension. And this is going to be the file type that I want Tecla to create. So when the file gets created, rather than it being an XSR extension, it's gonna be a CSV extension. And then like I said before, RPT is there so that the reports dialog box can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead here and say, okay. And then back in Tecla, I'm gonna run this report. Now. In order to see it, I'm gonna to have to close and reopen the reports dialog box. So now there's my sample BOM report.csv. It's different than the one that we created previously. Um, on the options tab here, if you have it set to on dialog, it's not gonna do you a whole lot of good. If I say create from all, all you're gonna see is the same report, but now with commas in it. Uh, what you wanna do is change this to with associated viewer. And again, that's just telling Tecla that when you create this report, I want you to open it in the associated program, whatever that program happens to be. In this case, a CSV file should be in Excel. Um, so I'm gonna make sure I have that selected, make sure that I have with associated viewer uh, selected on the options tab, and then go ahead and say create from all. And as you can see, right away it's opening Excel and these values are separated. Let me go ahead and, and space these out. The values are separated into separate columns. So that's a super easy, uh, extremely common way that people will try to get data out of Tecla, especially if you're trying to read it into another software. A lot of different programs can take those CSV files. So that's just one quick tip. Any of our uh, out of the box textual reports can be converted to this file type. Just remember, put the comma between the value fields save as a .csv.rpt file, and then go ahead and choose with associated viewer if you wanna you know, see it in Excel right away. So that's one new file type. Uh, a different report type, let's go back to this, and I'm gonna open up the, um, the previous report that does not have commas in it. Um, and I'm gonna turn this into another type of report called a selection report. Um, so the selection reports allow me to create a report in Tecla where I can select a line and it will actually highlight that object 
in the Tecla Structures model, which is pretty uh, handy for finding stuff. Uh, we do have a couple of out of the box reports that will do this, but I'm gonna show you how you can create one here quick. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a special type of value field called a globally unique identifier, that or GUID for short. A GUID is going to be a value that is uh, unique to an object or unique to an assembly. Uh, it says unique as a fingerprint. No two objects are gonna have the same GUID. So I'm gonna paste in a new value field here and I'm gonna choose GUID from the uh, options. And I'm gonna add that again below here in the part row. Now I can see right away that I'm having some, some issues here with it not fitting in the row. Uh, what I'm gonna do is increase the width of the road because this is a very long field. So I'm gonna double click in the background, choose an output width of, let's try 120 characters. And let's see if we can scoot these over there we go. So you can see as soon as I moved them, they did extend, taking advantage of the new space that I had given them. Now we can't just use this report right away. Um, if I do, it's simply going to print the GUID. It's not going to actually use the GUID for helping me select stuff. One last thing I need to do here is I need to add a prefix, basically a, a pointing out to Tecla, hey, this jumble of letters and numbers you're gonna see is a GUID. It is a number that I'm using to select something. So I'm gonna put GUID colon, and I'm going to paste it in here right before the GUID field, and then I'll just copy and paste this again below. So now I've got the prefix and the actual GUID, prefix and GUID. So we'll save this as a new name as well. Um, I'm just gonna come up here and go to File, Save As. There's no, um, no fancy extensions required here. I'm simply gonna maybe add sample BOM report selectable so that I can tell it's different from the other ones that we've created so far. And then back in Tecla, for running this type of report, you need to use the on dialog option. If you run it with Associated Viewer, it's just gonna open it up in Notepad, not gonna do me a whole lot of good there. So I'm gonna choose on dialog, and I'm gonna run the selectable report that I just created. Say create from all, and now I get my report in the Tecla list window um, with a GUID line. That's that unique number that we just added. Now the neat thing about this selectable report is as I select each row, it's actually going to select the object in the model. So you can see that I'm grabbing some bracing. Let's go down here until I grab some beams maybe. Um, so there we go, so I'll grab a beam. So there's that beam being selected right now. If I grab, grab B3, now that beam is being selected. And it's selecting it as an assembly because that is an assembly row. Now if I go down here and I select some of these part rows, now it's gonna grab the individual parts inside of this assembly. So a selection report is extremely helpful for being able to see something and where it is in the model, not just like get an output. I wanna be able to find it. I wanna be able to select it so that I can interact with it. Um, one last thing about these reports, these selectable reports, is if you hold down the F key as in fit, like fitting your work area, and then click on one of these lines, that's actually what it does, is it fits the work area down to that member. So it actually hides the surrounding model so that you can more clearly see what you're looking at. So that's another handy little tip. You just gotta remember that when you're done, you have to right click and fit work area to entire model, to stretch it back out again. So we have a simple textual report. We have the comma separated value report for opening up in Excel. We have the selectable report for finding stuff in, in the Tecla model. And then the last one I wanna show you is a graphical conversion of this report. Um, you'll see that in the default list and then also uh, in my custom list here, I do have some PDF reports. They are a little bit different than the textual reports. Um, so I'm gonna show you how you can convert yours into something a little bit nicer formatted. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the template editor. Here's my selectable. I'm gonna go ahead and oops, go ahead and open up again uh, the, the original report here. So um, the first thing that you, you wanna do is you want to convert this into a graphical template. So a PDF is considered a graphical report, not a textual report. Um, so we wanna go up to the file menu uh, choose template and then type. 
And when you choose type, you have the option to switch the type. You know, this was originally created as a textual template if you go back and watch the original video. Um, so I'm going to choose graphical and click OK. It's asked me for a confirmation and I'll say yes. Go ahead and convert that. So right away we can see that it does look much different. The, the fonts have already started to take more, uh, more of an appearance here and that's because the fonts do come into play. Now we do have to be careful right away is that when these fonts convert, often the height does not come in the way we want. You can see that this is only 5 1 28ths of an inch. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this report workspace a little bit bigger. Um, and then I can blow up these rows and make the fonts bigger as well. So I'm going to double click in the background. My current output width is uh, only uh, 3 inches and change. So let's go ahead and open this up to be uh, 8.5 inches. And then our output height will be 11 inches. So that's basically the size of a, a sheet of paper, right? Um, our margins here, we'll just go ahead and set these up to be a uh, quarter inch all the way around. And I'll say OK. So now I've got more space, um, so let's make this row a little bit taller and the next row a little bit taller as well, kind of give us some more room to work. And then we'll start bumping up the size of these value fields. So uh, if I double click on them, I can see the font type and the font height. I'll click on the button and this gives me the opportunity to change my font if I want, change my color. Uh, the color is simply going to be for me. The, uh, the, the PDF is still going to print in black. So um, don't, you know, this isn't going to actually output the or change the output of the PDF. This is just for me to, to, to kind of visually tell the difference between different uh, types of fields. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this an eighth inch tall and say OK. And I'm going to do this for the other fields as well. So just grab these one at a time. So I'll take length and we'll scoot those down a bit, make some space. Grab name. Do the same thing with this name field. Again, we'll slide these over and make some space, make some room. And then I'll do the positions. Okay, so now that I've got the fields bumped up, um, you know, we can move these around and align them a little bit better if we wanted to. Uh, but I do want to show you how you can bring in graphics. Um, that is the whole benefit, really, of switching over to a graphical uh, style report here. Um, so I'm going to add a row, I'm going to add a header row, uh, something for the beginning of my report. And we can insert things like images here. So I'm going to choose from the picture option. And in this case, I'm going to navigate to one of our default images. Um, you do have to set up the paths if you have custom images. Um, that is available on the Tecla User Assistance site. I don't want to get into that in this particular video. Um, but that is something that you can, you can do uh, or just drag and drop them into one of these folder paths. Uh, I'll just choose one of the default Tecla Structures images, pick two points to define the size of that, that picture, and then we'll go ahead and we'll save this report. Now just like the CSV reports, I do have to save this with a special name. So I'm going to call this um, sample BOM report. Uh, I'll call this graphical, if I can spell. And then uh, again, I need to put a special file extension in here. So I'm going to call this as a PDF. Dot RPT. Remember, RPT so that Tecla can see it as a report, PDF because that's the file type I want Tecla to create for me. Now just a quick note, the PDF option is something that's relatively new. So if you go back to an old version of Tecla, you may not have the PDF option. Um, in those older versions, you can still create an HTML.RPT and then Tecla will convert that to an HTML report, which can open up in a web browser. Um, those do require you to know some HTML code to really get the formatting nice on them. Um, this is a much easier method doing the PDF reports, but just be aware if you're trying to do this in an older version of Tecla, say, you know, older than three years maybe, um, the, the PDF option will not work for you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead here and say OK. And let's test this guy out. Let's go back to Tecla. I'm going to close and reopen the reports dialog. There's my graphical PDF. Just wanted to make sure it was showing up there. For a graphical, I am going to have to say with associated viewer. If I left that as on dialog, um, it wouldn't work for me. So I do have to choose with associated viewer. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and say create from all. 
So there we go. We can see how Tecla has opened that up in uh, my Adobe. Um, it is putting the image at the top, and then you can see that the, the fonts are coming in nice and big and bold um, in the fonts that I have chosen. So uh, obviously I would do some more work with there. Uh, I would add the spaces like I did before in the previous video. We could add line work to this if we wanted to, page headers. Um, but that's just a real quick intro to how we can get these reports into different types. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, we do cover this in a lot more depth in our training if that's something you're ever interested in taking. Uh, again, we have a lot of these reports that are built in that you can kind of uh, dissect them and see how we built them and uh, reverse engineer them as your own. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, go ahead and leave some comments below if you have any questions or if you have any ideas for future videos. And as always, thank you for watching.